Well, folks, I never thought I'd be out here talking about TikTok and literally, you know, saying anything to defend TikTok, but it's all over the place. It's in the news. Everybody's talking about it. And the, the thing about TikTok is I think that corporate America looks at a very successful company and they look at, namely, the heart of what TikTok has is the algorithm. If you've never been on TikTok, I, I like to go on TikTok and uh, for 15, 20, 30 minutes, you know, and I'll, and I'll see a video about a guy that's giving me tips on how to use WD-40 to do something new and interesting. I love that. I'll see a guy working on a bathroom. I'll see a guy working on his car. Oh my God, I love that car. How, what is he doing? You know, how did this happen? I'll see a guy talking about, you know, at an auto repair shop, why he thinks the best car is this and in this, this kind of thing. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. That's the algorithm. Why is everybody afraid of the algorithm? I mean, Facebook has got an algorithm. They all have algorithms. The thing about it is TikToks is the, the algorithm that TikTok uses is the heart of it. And it's extremely successful. It's what has made TikTok what it is today. And it's made people willing to put videos into TikTok because it drives that user experience. The algorithm will pair it with people that have similar interests and all this kind of stuff. Corporate America is jealous, like all hell, of TikTok. And I've got an interview here. So this is a guy, his name is Joe Bonsdale. He's an American entrepreneur, entrepreneur and technology investor. He's a founder of 8VC, a technology investment firm and co-founder of Palantir Technologies, Adapar, Open Dot, OpenGov, and was an early investor in a number of companies, including the e-commerce platform Wish. Graduated from Stanford University, right? Ah, intelligent man. Knows what he's talking about. And so have a listen to this. This is his interview. And it comes down to that algorithm. They really want to get their hands on this algorithm, folks. Listen to this. Are you concerned by China's influence and how would you approach it? with its increasing strength. I would force them to divest of TikTok. I think that I think that's fine for Americans to own TikTok. I think right now China controls the TikTok algorithms. I don't care if the guy's based in Singapore or some of the data is here. It's very clear China controls algorithms that are able to Excuse me, how is it clear? And and folks, this guy thinks that the data is partially in the US and partially in Singapore. I mean, he's an IT guy. He should know that TikTok, according to this Reuters article, moved U.S. user data to Oracle servers. This is an article from June 17th of 2022. It goes on to say that TikTok has completed migrating information on its U.S. servers at Oracle in a move that could address U.S. regulatory concerns over data integrity on the popular short video app, The Move which was first reported by Reuters, comes nearly two years after U.S. National Security Panel ordered parent company ByteDance to divest TikTok because of fears that U.S. user data could be passed on to China's communist government. So at that time, they were worried about the whole thing. The whole thing about TikTok was we're worried about user data. Remember that? User data. User data. We don't want that going to China. China. We don't want it going to China. You know, it's all about the user data. Well, you just heard him a second ago. It's like he thinks he doesn't really know and he can't explain to you why he feels this way, but it's the algorithm now. Now it's the algorithm. That's the big evil algorithm. Um, they've moved everything to the U.S. You know, I just can't help but feel like this company's being terrorized in a way that we've never seen before. And for what? And for what? It's They just want to get their hands on the algorithm. And, you know, until somebody can actually show me how the algorithm is propagated by the Chinese government and is brainwashing people, you know, I, I don't see how anybody could go along with this, to be honest with you. They keep moving the goalposts when it comes to TikTok. They just want to get their hands on the algorithm. And I think that really what's at the root of this is in one way, folks, especially with some of these hardcore GOP people, is that when their children are on TikTok, 
And let's say the guy's not interested in girls. I don't know. You know, and he looks at videos that make, you know, that he's interested in that have nothing to do with girls and they have a lot to do with guys. They keep getting fed that. And that sort of portrays the narrative of grooming and all this other BS and, you know, how people are being groomed to be gay or something. They haven't said that yet, but just wait, it's coming. It's coming. You'll hear that too. But it, it starts with what your interest is. And then it feeds you information and videos based on what your interest is. So if you start with that interest, well, it will end with that interest. But folks, to say that this is something malicious that the Chinese government is doing, I mean, it's too easy. It, and we've got to actually push these people to prove that. Like we do with everything else. If you think this is something that the Chinese government is doing, by God, show us the proof, right? Where's the beef, folks? I mean, it's, uh, it, we got to kick back on this. I mean, it's, it's insane that we're spending time on, on TikTok, of all things, in Washington, D.C. So, folks, now I'm going to transfer over to um, some of the corny stuff that's been going on today getting off the, the TikTok ride here for a second. I'm going to talk about uh, Ben Shapiro today. Doesn't think that anybody should retire. And this is kind of a, I don't know, I kind of see it as like a GOP thing. They want you to, they don't want to be the government to tell you uh, what you should and shouldn't do, right? I mean, that's a big GOP thing, right? And they make a big deal out of it. The government shouldn't tell us that we have to do this and do that. Well, he's telling you, and, and the whole nation, that he doesn't think anybody should retire at 65. Listen to what he says. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. Friends, <laughs> I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some stupid. Kind of problem. Everybody that I know who is, who is elderly, who has retired, is dead within five years. Oh, really? And if you talk to people who are elderly and they lose their purpose in life by losing their job and they stop working, things go to hell in a handbasket real quick. But... Oh yeah, because then people have time to do videos like I do, right? I'm not even 65 yet, but it gives them time to do that. Hell in a handbasket, here we go. But here's somebody who's who's demanding that people should not retire. Why, why don't you just let people decide what they what the hell they want to do? Uh, ben Shapiro, with the caterpillar eyebrows, why don't you just let people decide? I mean, what's wrong with that, for God's sakes? You know, the, the GOP, they use that whole thing. The government is telling us what to do when it works for them. You know, just just... Let people figure out when they want to retire, for God's sakes. Switching gears to South Dakota, folks. Christy Noem of South Dakota, the governor. I, I don't know if this is a paid endorsement, but why would she make a video like this? Why? Have a look. Hi, I'm Christy Noem. I'm the governor of South Dakota. And oh, yeah. I had the opportunity to come to Smile, Texas to fix my teeth, which has been absolutely amazing. For Good. I have needed yeah. to have an adjustment to my teeth from a biking accident. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. was uh, mm -hmm. out bike riding with all of my kids when they oh, were yeah. little and uh, had a biking accident. Oh, yeah? Knocked, out all of my Knocked your teeth out. So Knocked your teeth out. And the good doctor fixed them. I mean, what, what, why? Why? <laughs> why? Has she nothing better to do in South Dakota? I mean, is it so, things so slow? that, you know, she's got time to make a video about this. Um, oh, yeah, and I'm going to show you this. So here's Trump a couple of days ago, Mar-a-Lago, and this this uh, sort of opera singer was there. And listen to how she sang that, the, the song to Trump. She's like, I, I don't know what the hell this is, but I'll let you decide. Your power over us goes stronger every day and Dems turn their back on you. Folks, it's a cult. I mean, come on. This is a cult. Um, I, I, mean, I rest my case. I really do. I mean, this is insane stuff. It's, get, it's getting crazy. But that's not, 
the end of it, folks. I mean, when you want to hear crazy, here's Donald Trump actually saying, I guess people like me for pushing back on Donald Trump, I'm an insurrectionist now. It's They're trying to tweak. It's like a Roy Cohn move. Remember Roy Cohn? Trump's uh, friend who was the, the lawyer. Uh, you know, crazy man Roy Cohn. It's like something Roy Cohn would say, but here it is. Trump is flipping the whole definition of insurrectionist to make me an insurrectionist. In many ways, the enemy on the inside is far more dangerous than China and Russia and all of it. These are really bad people, and actually they are insurrectionists. Okay, so because you're in love with Putin, because you're in love with all of these other autocrats, Viktor Orban, and all of these different guys, they're okay, right? What they do, what Putin has done to Ukraine and, and to his people, for God's sakes, and he's got an election coming up, if you can call it that, um, and everything that they do is okay, but I'm the insurrectionist for pushing back on somebody like Donald Trump. I mean, this is sort of that weird psycho mind effing stuff that's going on here, folks, that uh, just, just makes me really, really, you know, as if it, it wasn't abundantly clear, it makes me really not like this man in, in, a, in a really <laughs> a strong way. He's just nuts, folks. Let's face it, he's nuts. So I want to thank you for joining me. We'll look for you next time. Till then.